Hello, welcome to another AP Computer Science Principles lesson. I am Mrs. Julie Alano. I teach at Hamilton Southeastern High School in Fishers, Indiana, so just outside of Indianapolis, Indiana. I've been teaching AP Computer Science Principles since it started as an AP course. Love this class and I'm so excited to talk to you today about a programming option for you to use at home. So let's jump in to the lesson overview. As you may know, you uh, for the AP exam this year, we are only doing the explore and the create. So what I'm here to do today is to help you with programming from home. Is the programming language you learn not supported by the device you have accessed at home? So maybe you only have a phone, maybe you only have a tablet, maybe you're on a Chromebook, Things are different than maybe they were at your school. So today we're going to learn a new programming language that can be used on phones, Chromebooks, or tablets. I tested it out on my phone myself, my iPad. Sorry, I don't have a Chromebook, but I tried it. Tried everything. I think it's going to work really well. Um, I'm excited to share it with you today. Um, I wasn't aware of it until recently. So um, it is um, the Microsoft Make Code Arcade programming environment. There are many different versions of make code. So this is a certain one and that we'll be um, just introducing to today on this lesson. So I will introduce you, show you how it works, how to set up a project on it, how to get started on it and make a quick little project for today. So based on that, these are the learning objectives and essential knowledge statements that we'll be covering today. So, um, the hope is, is that you have covered most of the programming topics that you need for the create task. We, were, we are going to review those in the lessons that I do today and another day. So um, in today's lesson, we'll just focus on sequencing, which is just basically that your code happens in the order that it appears. Um, and that is um, part of a learning objective that is on the create task, and that is to develop an algorithm for implementation in a program. So we know that there's sequencing, selection, and iteration. Today, we're only going to be doing sequencing. Uh, selection and iterations will be covered in later lessons. So know that, yes, you probably do know, I hope, and based on the previous lessons for CSP, that you need to develop an algorithm for implementation in a program. And that's part of the big, one of the big parts of the create task. So and an algorithm can consist of um, sequencing, selection, and iteration. So that's what we're thinking about today is just putting some code in, making it run. We're just really getting used to the environment. We'll cover these other topics in the next lesson. So hopefully you have some knowledge of programming language. That's our goal is to just show you another way to use your programming knowledge. So that's what we're going to head into today. So what you need to know. Here is the link to get to this programming environment. Again, the programming environment is Make Code Arcade. So you see the link right here, arcade.makecode.com. Really easy, you should be able to just type it in. It will be added, I think, in the video notes, but you could just type it in, it's real short. Um, if you visit that, you should see a page like you see on my screen at this time. From this page, you'll be able to make a new project. You see I've got one here. Um, and if you want, go ahead. If you want to follow along on this lesson, that'd be great. Um, if you want, so go ahead and make a new project and give it a meaningful name. So, but this is what you should see. The good news is your projects will save. So if you make multiple projects, they'll save right down here. You can do um, a download feature to save them to your device if you're really worried, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I do wanna show if you're on a phone or a tablet. So this next screen, um, so once you make a new project, this is what it will look like on a computer or Chromebook. So you will see that we have different um, types of things that we can add. Notice that I do have the advanced section expanded. We will use that eventually. You see um, an emulator over here. So you are going to be emulating a little game on this device. So it will let you press buttons and test it out and all you need right there. 
your code will show up over here on the right. And do notice that you can switch from blocks to JavaScript. So if you're more comfortable with um, typing code, you can do text or you can do blocks. It's up to you. You can switch between. So if you want to use the blocks to help you know what you're able to do and pull those over and then switch to text to do some modifications or adjust your code, that's fine as well. So this is just the home screen. And as I said, it does work on a phone really pretty well or an iPad or any other sort of tablet. Um, and so on your computer, you will see it this way and it's very um, easy. You can see what happens over here. You can stop, you can run. You can go full screen with your game if you want, which might be good for when you record um, for the create task. So you can do that here. There is a save button if you're worried about saving as you go or if you're worried that your internet may not be real reliable. On a phone or a tablet, here we go. This is what it looks like. So this is a direct screenshot from my phone, which is an Android phone, but I would assume it was similar. Um, it's from within, and I did test it on the iPad as well. So this is from within the browser. So whatever browser you want to use, Chrome, Safari, whatever, this is what it will look like. So you'll have to click on these sections um, to see the blocks, but then you can pull the blocks out here into the coding environment. Um, notice I got some helpful stuff here. So this is your game screen. So it's a little smaller there on the phone. Um, but this is where what it will show what you're doing as you go, but in order to actually test and run it, you need to click on that. So by clicking on this black little screen right here, which will show what you're making, will bring up the game screen, which is on the right. So then you, this will be your full phone or tablet, and then you can test what you just coded. To go back to the coding screen, it's this little button right here on the right. That's the full screen mode. So from full screen back to the coding mode. So this, again, should look the same if you're on a phone or a tablet. And so it really has worked pretty well to be able to do the coding, especially with just blocks. It may not be quite as fun if you do it with um, text, but blocks it seemed to be pretty easy to pull the blocks out and edit and modify on a phone or tablet so hopefully um, whatever device you're on you have set up a new project at this point so make sure you gave it some sort of name we're just going to practice right now so you can just call it practice or sample or whatever you want to call it um, and we're going to jump in and take a look at um, how make code works. So I'm going to guide you through an introductory project. I will pause occasionally to make sure you're able to follow along. I go fast very often, so I'll try to make sure and go slow. Um, feel free to select different colors or pictures. Just don't spend too much time to practice. You can mess around with this all you want between this video and the next video and, you know, go through and try things out yourself. Unfortunately, what we're making today would not meet the requirements for the create task. This is just to introduce you to this programming environment to let you see some features and things you can do and to, you know, realize that this is something you could use if what you were using in your classroom is not working well for you. I know there's a ton of programming environments and what you submit when you submit your create task. It doesn't matter what programming environment you use or what language you're supposed to tell them. So um, this, uh, this meets that requirement. And so hopefully uh, the concepts you learned in your class, you'll be able to apply to this environment if this environment works for you. Or maybe you just want to try something new and you decide to do your create task using this programming environment. So I'm going to get out of my PowerPoint here and I'm going to head over to uh, the Make Code environment. So here is my project that I made earlier. So hopefully you are also on this screen. If you're not, again, just go to arcade.makecode.com and head to that uh, website and then click new project and give your project a name. Should be quick and easy there. So we're gonna explore some of the um, block sections. Uh, again, we're gonna do 
multiple lessons on this. So today we're just getting introduced to it. We're not going to understand all of the parts of it today, but we'll take a look at some of them. So this does use sprites um, and I will create a sprite in just a second. Um, so this is used to create a sprite. Um, you see there are a lot of this section, the physics section, a lot of things you can do with your sprite about moving them around the screen and changing their X and Y coordinates should be similar to any um, other program you used where zero zero is the top left corner of your screen. So your X, Y coordinates can be used to move your sprite. Um, and there are different types of players and sprites. We'll get into that later, but for now, and you can really play with that, but for now we're just gonna stick to sprites. You can even do fun little effects. We're gonna do that. It seemed to be the first fun thing to do. You can make your sprites say something. We'll get into that too. And there's also projectiles. It's a good thing they're on the screen and not actual projectiles. So we will take a look at how those work a little bit today. And there's a ton more things you can do here. We're not going to get to too many of those today, but know that there, if you're at, wanting to try something, just scroll through and try the block out. Never hurts to try. So that's the sprite section, which we'll be using today. We'll also be using the controller section here. As you can see, it allows you to do stuff with the buttons on the screen. There is a multiplayer option. We're not going to get into that. So we'll stick up here to the single player buttons and how those can be used. There's also a game section here. Um, we'll talk about this in a later lesson. Um, a lot of this stuff is really cool, but may not help you with the create task. So we'll talk about you know, what will need to happen in order for you to meet the requirements of the create, but you can always mess around with this and it's really fun to make a game of your own. You can add sound, again, not required or anything for the create task. The scene is a good one and we're gonna uh, work with it. Notice that you can change the background color or make a background image um, and the screen width and screen height can come in handy at times. So, um, and there's also some screen effects. Um, we're not gonna get into the tiles, but know that that's there. Um, some other things you can use down there, but we're really gonna stick to the top section here. Um, that's pretty much it for today um, of the blocks that we're gonna cover. Obviously you see a lot of other ones here. And as I said, I have the advanced section um, expanded because we will eventually get into the some of these advanced topics too so keep that in mind that there's more down there in the advanced section as you're working or testing out this new programming environment the next lesson we'll do will involve logic and variables and some maths we'll get into all those things which again you should have done before but for today we're just going to stick to making a quick little scene here with some objects on it so Let's go ahead and set our background color. So you want to just click on that block. It comes out here like this. You can then drag it in to the on start and go ahead and pick a color of your choice. So whatever you want to set that background color to. I like a nice spring color there. So now that you have your background, let's add a sprite. So up to the sprite section and again, pull out the block there. If you click on it, it should just pop over or you can click and drag whichever way you want to do it. And then put that into the on start. We got a nice gray blank sprite right now. So you want to click here on that gray area. It's a free editor, so you can draw whatever you want if you're really into drawing. Um, but I'm just going to go over to the gallery here um, and pick out, and I'm just going to use rubber duck. I don't know how many of you have done rubber duck debugging, but the rubber duck seems like a fun item to use for my sprite. And so once you do that, you should see on your screen on the left that your background has changed and that your sprite is now on the screen. So hopefully everyone has done that, picked a color, picked a sprite. There's tons of options in there. You can pick out the sprite of your choice and add that over here. So obviously we can see it immediately updates. It's actually running right now. So you see there's the stop button. So you could stop the simulator. Right now there's not much else we can do because we haven't coded anything else on the buttons. I will go ahead and show the full screen. So if you click here, 
takes you to a big full screen uh, gaming device, which you can do lots of other options in there too. So if you exit full screen mode, and again, that's the same button um, that you kind of need to use if you're on a phone or a tablet. So just wanted to show that that's there. So what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna go into the controller section and I'm gonna use the um, on button pressed event. So notice this event has a lot of options. These drop downs, whenever you see a drop down like this, you want to check that out. So there's all the different buttons that are on the game screen that we can select here to code. And then there's different events we can code too. So you can code the pressed event, the released event, or the repeat event. So we're going to start with the right button. So when the right button, which is over here, so on right button pressed and we're going to put some code in here to make our sprite do something i really liked the effects so i'm going to go in to sprites and scroll down to the start effect so these are really fun um, and so you can pop that in and there's a lot of different effects here you can choose so i'm going to go with a fountain um, for mine. And then this is convenient because if you don't change the time, it's just going to fountain for the rest of the time, unless you stop it. But for now, I'm just going to have it fountain for 500 milliseconds, which is a half a second, or you could adjust it to change to those different times there. So I'm going to test my code. Very good to put some code in, make sure it works. So right now, if I go over here, this program is running. And if I click on the right button, my duck has a fountain. So you should see some things coming out of him. Maybe I want it to fountain a little longer. Maybe it'll be more fun that way. Let's see. So let's click the right button. Oh yes, more fountain coming out. Every time I press it, we get more fountain. So that's an effect that you can do on a sprite, any sprite. You can add those effects. Now, since it is the right button, I thought maybe we should move our sprite to the right. So I'm gonna add another block to that same section. So I'm gonna use the change my sprite. So if I just pop this one in right now, change my sprite by zero, change my sprite X. So X, since I have am coding my right button, X is gonna be this direction, yep. So I'm gonna, but changing it by zero does nothing, I think. So if I click right right now, I still get my fountain but the X is not changing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with five and see what we get there. So program should have reset. Once you did something in your code, all I gotta do is go over here, click right. Oh, and he's now moving to the right. Unfortunately, he's gonna go off the screen and right now I can't bring him back. We'll have to fix that, huh? So um, something to think about as you're coding is yes, they can go off the screen. So he's now fountaining off the screen to the right. So with that, I'd say we code the left button press now. So let's go back to controller, pull out an on button press block. I'm gonna move this one out of the way and pull up this one up here. So as I said, I think I wanna do um, the left right now. So I'll drop down on left button pressed. And I'm gonna have the sprite do another effect. It'll be fun. We'll go left, we'll do one effect. Go right, we'll do another effect. So um, for this one, I will have, let's see, I think I like the smiles. I'm gonna have smiles effect. And again, I'm gonna do it for a second. Okay, so let's test. So I'm gonna go left button. And so I got some smiles coming out of my duck. They go down, it's pretty cool. And he's not moving because I haven't done any code to move my duck yet. So this way he moves. And then if I go left, he's not moving, but I get the smiles. So I wanna add that change my sprite. There it is, and pop that in. So in order to go left, remember that the top left corner of this is zero, zero. So to go back that direction to the left, I need to use a negative number. So I'm gonna put negative five in for that one. Still changing X, because I'm just going left or right. And so I'm gonna pop 
over here and should be all set. You don't have to wait for anything. So I'm going to go right and left. So duck's moving. I get smiles. I get a fountain. I can move him across the screen as much as I want. So hopefully you got your sprite to move with the buttons and it has some effect that you liked or picked out that was fun for you. So pretty cool stuff, right? Um, so I'm going to do one more thing here and then you can test out some stuff on your own. But I wanted to show another one. So kind of a cool one um, to do the projectiles. So let's go with um, another controller. So this time I want to use the down button because usually when you hit down, you're going to something will come out. So I'm going to change this to down. And then if I go to sprites and I scroll down to the projectiles section, you can um, set a projectile with a velocity. I'm just going to use the default velocity here. And um, you can do it to projectile from your sprite. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one just to make sure it comes from where I want. It's a big block, so I'm going to pull it over here to make sure you can see everything and maybe move my left and right buttons down out of the way. So a big block there, and right now it's not doing anything because I haven't selected a picture for my projectile. So click on the gray, and again, it brings you up with an editor. If you want to create your own item, you can. I'm going to head over to the gallery, and I think I'm going to use strawberries as my projectile. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead, select done. And you should see over here, if I go to the screen and I hit the down button, I get strawberries coming out of my duck. Pretty exciting, right? So we can move and then have strawberries, move and have strawberries. So pretty cool stuff. Um, it's pretty easy to add effects and get items added here. Once again, I want to remind you though that this, while this has a little bit of sequencing in it, this doesn't really meet the requirements for the create task. The next few lessons are going to get you those building blocks that you really need. Um, these on events are um, kind of tricky when we get, we'll get to later how you can use them, but yet also add in your own abstraction or function, which we will talk about as you can see here. That'll be very important when we, as you um, plan your create task. So know that um, it's fun and really cool stuff in here, but that you will need to add some more items and make sure that you still meet the requirements of the create task and not just make a fun little game. Um, and remember, looks aren't that important either. So wow, we had some fun with the fountain and, uh, the smiles, um, they aren't really um, going to make much difference when you do your create. So we'll want to stick to things where we are changing our X and Y values and we'll introduce variables and loops um, and ifs. And so that will help you meet those requirements for the create task. So hopefully you were able to make your own quick little introduction to your first project on MakeCode and uh, picked out something you want there. You probably have tried multiple things now while I'm talking even. Um, so if you haven't done so already, try something on your own. Pick out you know, another block that I didn't look at or do that make the up button do something. Um, but go ahead and try something on your own. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes here and then we are going to wrap up this lesson um, again, it was a quick introduction to the programming environment. Um, so hopefully you um, or have a chance to try this out on your own device during this video. I do want to point out the download button. So again, this would allow you to download the file um, to your device, which will save it more if you want. So if you're worried about your internet connection or it not saving in the make code environment, you could download it, which then it can be imported back into the make code environment. So know that that's what that button's for, but really right here is your save button. So if you're worried or wanna make sure that you save, which actually does, the, um, and it saves a picture, 
um, and you can download it in to reload it that way too. So, but it saves automatically. So if I go back out to home right now, you can see this is my first project right here. And it just says I started it three minutes ago, reloads all set, ready to go again. So it takes a second here uh, to load the screen, but there's my duck again and everything should work just fine. So you can go back in and out um, you can download you can save it otherwise so that you make sure you have it um, when it's time to use it so if you're just practicing right now no worries um, and you do have some undo buttons down here um, and again let's go ahead and take a look at the switch to javascript so at any time you can um, pull that up and you can see the actual javascript code if you prefer coding in javascript you can do that um, and you can see that there's some, you know, it's all kinds of built-in code here. Uh, you see it's even got the actual code for your image. So um, that we made my duck there. So how it's coded in color. So that's pretty cool. So if you wanna switch to JavaScript at any time, that's nice, uh, but you can also just stick with blocks. So as I talked through that, hopefully um, you tried some other things out yourself or took a look at those things with me. Um, so hopefully this environment is good for you and you will be able to use this or maybe it's just something new you want to try right now because there's plenty of time to try things. So um, I'm going to pop back over to the PowerPoint here and we're going to talk about what was covered today. So short lesson, but it's just an introduction to make code. So hopefully you were able to open up the make code programming environment and make your own first project and see how it goes. Um, and you should be able to continue exploring it on your own, just like I did. Just pull out blocks, try them out, test out numbers, test out values, see how it all works. See if it's something you want to use and it works for you as you're planning your create task. Um, as I said earlier, tune in next time. We're going to learn about using if and selection statements as well as variables in the math. So a lot more things that help to meet those requirements on the create task in this programming environment. We will also get to loops and functions and lists. So some of that may get a little further on where you may not have covered it. So we'll slow down on those lessons. You know, those lessons will be a little longer where uh, we'll definitely dive into those topics a little further in case you didn't have a chance to cover those in your class before school was um, let out. So um, hopefully you got your first project up and running and you had some fun with your sprites and your projectiles and some of the effects we did there. Um, again, tune in for the next lessons with a few more details about how, what you're going to need to do that create task. Uh, we'll finish up with a couple slides here to, um, close out if you need assistance. So if you're watching this video, um, as a teacher and you know, your student may need assistance or, you know, someone who does, um, please have them. Uh, get in touch with the College Board at that address there, cb.org slash tech, um, and they're working on solutions to get uh, devices or connectivity so you can complete the tasks to submit and get an AP score. So reach out, or if you know someone else who needs that assistance, please reach out and help them out. That is it for today's lesson over Make Code Environment, and I will see you on the next one when we tackle if statements.